Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamerica.com here, and today we've got your indoor smart bike shootout. Uh, these are indoor smart bikes. You've got the Watt Bike Atom here, the Tax Neo Bike here, and the Wahoo Kicker Bike right there. Now the key reason why I'm using these three bikes or comparing these three bikes is that all of them support open standards, they support connectivity to things like Zwift and Trainer Road, and they support control across all three of them. So that's why I'm not including the Peloton bike here, it's just ones that are primarily used for things like Zwift and Trainer Road and Sufferfest and Kinomap and Full Gas and all those apps out there. Now, I'll give you a bit of a spoiler right now. Uh, there's gonna be no best bike. I'm not gonna declare a best bike here. Uh, one, because it's gonna depend on your budget, it's gonna depend on what features you want, it's gonna depend on your availability. Uh, something like Kicker Bike is only available in the US, and by available, I mean only if you're one of roughly 100 people this year. So that's gonna limit kind of the choices there. And two, I don't think there is a best bike. Uh, these are all great bikes. I think you're gonna enjoy these bikes if you buy these bikes. But I think they're all first generation bikes. And I think there's caveats and catches and things that all three manufacturers are either learning or have already learned in the case of something like the, the Watt bike has been out for two years that I think we fast forward two years or so, they're gonna be dramatically different bikes and probably at different price points as well. So with that, let's go ahead and sit down at the desk and kind of walk through all the features. I'm gonna compare all these three bikes in a couple different categories. I do have a complete shootout post that you can see right now on the screen here, and that's gonna go through way more detail than I can possibly capture in this particular video. So things like Q factors, I'm not gonna talk about here, all that kind of like nuanced measurement stuff, it's in the post right there, and a lot of little nuanced features that, again, I just can't really fit in this video without it being 45 minutes long. Now down in the description right there in the first comment, I'll put little time codes. So if you wanna skip around to different sections of this particular comparison, you can do that. So the first category is getting it set up and kind of a whole unboxing type experience. Uh, and it definitely is an experience. Uh, all these boxes are pretty darn heavy. They're about 50 kilos, so roughly uh, between 110 and 120 pounds all in. They mostly will take two people though. If you're determined like myself, you can get it done with one person. It's just gonna be a little bit sketchy. So the Watt bike is going to be the easiest. That one comes completely fully assembled, minus sliding a seat post and attaching the aero bar slash kind of tablet holder on it. And then from there you get to the Wahoo bike, which for me took about 20 minutes, not including taking photographs and stuff like that. And then above that, you've got the tax bike, which took about 30 minutes again, including photographs and stuff like that. None of this is hard. It's all fairly straightforward. It's just simply following the steps step by step until you get to the end of it. Now, once you've got it assembled, it's time to go ahead and get it set up for your particular position. Now, all three of these bikes support adjustments so that you can go ahead and move things like the seat post up and down and the front up and down. But how they do that is different for each one. In the case of the Watt Bike Atom, for example, you can move that seat post up and down using just a lever, no problem. You can move the front handlebar entire system there up and down using just the levers, but you can't slide that seat post or the front handlebars forward and backwards with levers. You need to use a hex wrench to do that. Whereas in the case of the Tax Bike and the Wahoo Bike, there's levers for all those different things. So you can kind of do that on the fly a little bit easier. For the most part, change between two people's positions takes about 20 to 30 seconds in my experience. Though for all of them, you'll need to go into the app and also change the weight especially if you've got someone with kind of dramatically different weight because that'll impact the ride feel of the trainer itself. So if you don't do that, for example, things like sprints and whatnot will feel weird and, and incorrect. Now for me in my particular height, I'm a six foot two, which I think is roughly 192, 193 centimeters. I had no problems finding my position on any of these bikes. The one challenge I did have though is what I would call the thigh gap problem, which in particular is on the Tax Neo bike and the Kicker bike. The top tube there is fairly thick. It's way, way thicker than my average road bike thicker than the uh, Watt Bike Atom, which means that my thighs actually rub on both of those bikes. Uh, now in the case of the Tax Bike, that top tube doesn't actually go all the way across. In fact, it's just the seat post that's essentially causing that issue versus the kicker bike, it goes all the way across. And so check out my full post. I include the exact measurements, all that kind of stuff and how to double check your particular thigh gap to see if you'll fit or not. Even though I rub on it, it doesn't really bother me that much for rides up to roughly about an hour, which is usually kind of the max of my trainer rides. Uh, but for you, it may be a bigger issue. Next is shifting and gearing. Uh, now this one's easy, Wahoo wins. Like it's it's so much better than everyone else. Uh, the way Wahoo has done their gearing. But first let's talk about the Atom because that's sort of like the, the basic level. Now keep in mind the Atom is the cheapest one so it does sort of make sense here. In the case of the Atom you have shifters on the right hand side. The buttons are actually duplicated on both sides but the shifters on the right hand side is the only one that'll go ahead and shift. And it supports essentially two different gear options. You can do an 11 speed or 22 speed. Uh, and then the way you shift is using the right hand shifter buttons. There's two little buttons in the front there. You just go up and down through that entire gear range. There is no concept of front chain rings or back assets. It's simply 
up and down from 1 to 11 or 1 to 22 and back down again. Uh, previously, they only had 22 gears and then 11 came out uh, this past fall. The 11 is so much better than 22, like worlds away better. The downside that was shifting on the Atom is that it doesn't have any like real tactile feedback. You hear a tiny little click, but as soon as you're pedaling or the fan is on, you can't hear that anymore. So you don't really know like if you've shifted or if it's confirmed it. On Zwift, it'll show you that particular shift, but that's really about it. Next, you go to the tax bike. Uh, the tax bike has shifters on both sides. They don't look like a real bike yet, but they've got little buttons there that you kind of mirror shifting on both sides. And you have this whole concept of a front and rear uh, cassette and chain ring. So you can define the front chain rings however you want, a one by, two by, three by, compact, whatever you want to do, you can define it in the app. And the same for the cassette in the back, you can do uh, anywhere from zero uh, cogs in the back all the way up to 12 cogs in the back. So you could replicate again, a like 12 speed access or a SRAM Eagle, all that kind of stuff, no problems at all. The shifters though, aren't awesome. Like they're not bad, they're just not awesome. You shift your virtual front derailleur with the left-hand side and you shift the uh, back portion with the right side, kind of like a standard bike, no issues there at all. But then you step it up to the kicker bike and from a shifting standpoint there, they've replicated not just that whole front chain ring and uh, back portion there, just like the tax bike, but they've also replicated how you shift. So for example, you can set it up for DI2 shifting or ETAP shifting or Campagnolo shifting. However you want, you can do that. In my case, I ride ETAP outside on my road bike. So I duplicated that where if I go ahead and hold both sides, it does the front shift, hold it again, back in to the lower uh, cogs there. It's awesome. Like the shifting is so, so good there. And both the Wahoo bike as well as the tax bike will also briefly sort of stutter the flywheel. So you feel that shift as it comes through the bike. It's a really, really cool sensation. And once you felt that, you're like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And you go back to the Atom and it's not there anymore. Again, the Atom's a thousand dollars plus cheaper. So there are some trade-offs you're making there. As far as braking goes, both the Tax and the Wahoo bike do have brake handles on it. Uh, and that'll actually stop the flywheel on both those bikes. But if you're using Zwift, it won't actually stop your avatar because your avatar is based on power or pedaling. It has nothing to do with the flywheel. So that's something that Zwift kind of needs to figure out with the manufacturers. Same is true as steering. Um, both of those bikes have dedicated steering buttons that Zwift doesn't yet support, despite Zwift asking these companies to put the steering in there. Eventually they'll do that, but they don't support it today for these bikes. They support the little uh, phone app thing that you saw back at Eurobike, but that doesn't work on these bikes because they don't rotate. So yeah, uh, the Atom doesn't support steering either, but it does have buttons that could be leveraged for steering. So it's really in the same exact spot as the Tax and the Wahoo bike. Everyone's waiting on Zwift. Next, if you're a triathlete or doing time trials, uh, you can go ahead and put aero bars on all these bikes. No issues there at all. Standard road bike handlebar arrangement there. So you can use clip on aero bars. With the Watt Bike Atom, it actually comes with aero bars or an aero bar ish arrangement, uh, which holds up the iPad there. So you've got that already there if you want to use it. In the case of the Tax Bike, you will have some considerations for that front display. I was surprised though that it actually wasn't an issue for my particular clip on bars. Uh, and that's mostly because most clip on bars actually raise up a little bit before they got outbound. Uh, so you end up clearing the entire console more than I ever expected once I put them on there. And then in the case of the Wahoo bike, it's just a standard road bike handlebar and there's nothing in front of you. So the world's your oyster there. Next, we have a bit of a practical thing, which is displays, storage, and USB ports. Uh, now these are indoor bikes. They're not gonna go out road riding on these bikes out in the road. Never mind, we'll talk about that later on. Uh, but for right now, they're indoor bikes. Uh, so that means that you want things like a display to be able to see what gearing you're in. And you want things like storage, you've got to put stuff. And you want things like a USB port to be able to plug things in and charge them, whether it be a tablet or so on. So the Wattbike Atom doesn't have any USB ports, unfortunately, uh, and doesn't have a place to store things. It does, however, have a tablet stand built into it, and that works just fine. It's built into the aero bars, as you see there. The case of the tax bike is sort of like the Mercedes Benz when it comes to all the three of those categories there. It has two two amp USB ports under the bottom there. Uh, it's got a full storage area there that you can put all sorts of fun stuff in there, gels, etc. And it's even got a removable inset. So it's a rubber like silicone inset you can take out. You can go ahead and dishwash it if you get a bunch of weird gel stuff in there. Who knows what you did to it, but you can clean it really easily. Uh, it has the display console there, which depending on which app you're in will either show things like gearing, or if you're not in any app, it'll show things like incline and speed. It'll also show heart rate as well, paired to your heart rate strap. It also has two fans up there as well. They aren't too awesome. It's like a light breeze, like me just giving you a blow. I don't say that. Me just, it just 
blowing on you lightly. Uh, that's what they're like. So uh, anyways, that's their, they're not bad. It's better than nothing, I suppose, but eh. And then finally, the Wahoo bike has essentially none of that. Uh, so it technically has one USB port underneath the front stem there, and it has a tiny little display that you can see your gearing also down below there. But it's in kind of a horrible position because one, where are you gonna put your phone once you plug it in? Like there's no place to clip on. You have to buy an extra accessory that Wahoo doesn't make to clip on the handle. So that's kind of sucky. The display also is in a weird spot. You're basically looking at your crotch every time you want to go look at it. It's like Chris Froome with this head unit. It's just not really ideal. Next, how does the bike feel when you're actually riding it? Uh, now, it's almost exactly aligned to price. Uh, in the case of the Watt Bike Atom here, it's not great, but it's not horrible. It's just sort of good. Uh, it's using a stepper motor for things, so it's a bit of an older technology. And then you go up to the Tax Bike, and that's using the exact same internals as the Neo 2T, the Tax Neo series. Uh, so it's pretty darn good. It's definitely something that a lot of people have loved, so there's no real issues there. And then you've got the Wahoo bike, uh, which is using the same technology as the Tax Neo, so actually very different technology than the rest of their kicker indoor trainers. Uh, and I think I would give a slight edge to the Wahoo bike for road feel, but we're talking like nuanced slight edge. If you rode one and then went away and then didn't ride the next one, you would never know this difference. But when I've got them lined up here and I ride them one after another, I noticed a slight difference there, primarily on accelerations. That's, that's really it uh, between the three of them. Now this next section here is pretty self-explanatory. However, in addition to the sound and the noise, pay attention to the movement as well between the different bikes. Okay, a quick note before we go on to the next one. If you're finding this video useful or interesting or whatever the case may be, go ahead and whack that like button right now at the bottom there. It really helps out the video and the channel quite a bit. From an application compatibility standpoint, all three of these support AMP plus FEC and Bluetooth Smart Control. I didn't say Bluetooth Smart FTMS because both the Kicker Bike and the Tax Neo Bike technically support only their own protocols for that. And in the case of the Kicker Bike, it also doesn't broadcast out as standard power or standard cadence on AMP Plus or Bluetooth Smart. Wahoo says that's coming at some point. Again, it'll show you power and cadence when you're connected to a trainer app, but you can't necessarily use it to monitor on a watch, for example, or whatnot, uh, like you can the rest of Wahoo's trainers. Now's a good time to talk about accuracy. Uh, all three of these bikes are pretty darn close on accuracy. I'm not really seeing any outliers there. I dive into all of the accuracy nuance in my full in-depth reviews of each one of them. In the case of the Wahoo bike, that'll come next week. Uh, but accuracy-wise, it's pretty good across the board. Next, there's a bit of the party tricks category, which simply means there's things that don't fit into the other categories like in nice little buckets. That doesn't mean they're bad, they just don't fit in a simple little bucket. Uh, so the Watt Bike Atom has no party tricks, no unique features that are like, oh, that's the Watt Bike Atom. Uh, in the case of the Tax Neo Bike, it's got kind of two and a half features, I guess you could say. Uh, number one is that it has road feel, so that means you'll actually feel cobblestones or you'll feel wood planks in Zwift, for example. As you go across the piers in Zwift, you'll feel that through your body. You'll feel the thump, 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 thump. just like if you were riding on a real uh, pier. It's, it's a super cool sensation the first time you feel it and really every time you feel it actually. And then in addition to that, it has down below a light that projects on the floor. Uh, basically the harder you pedal, the more red it gets and the same is true of the flywheel as well. And then you have the Wahoo Kicker, which goes up and down. So they've integrated a kicker climb into the Wahoo Kicker. Uh, it goes to up 20% and it goes down to negative 15%, though that is limited a little bit by your exact position. Uh, so in the case of my bike fit, I think that limited to a negative 11% down. I think there's probably a case to be made, a very slim case, but still a case to be made uh, for that the kicker climb aspect of going up and down may have a training benefit there. Uh, there's a little bit of science behind that, but it's a very small amount of science. Uh, so keep that in mind. Still, it's fun. Like all three of these features, all three of these uh, scenarios between the kicker bike and the tax bike are fun to use. And anything that makes indoor training more enjoyable is probably a good thing. Finally, the last thing we need to talk about 
is manufacturing quality. Uh, and that's not the manufacturing quality of my shaky ass table here, but of these bikes. Uh, and this is a tough one. And this is one that I think if you ignore everything else in this video, pay attention right here. Uh, so for most of this video, I've talked about how the Watt Bike Atom is essentially the lesser of the bikes. Uh, and that's not a bad thing, not at all. In fact, I think it's a fantastic bike. Uh, but it costs less money, especially if you're in the UK. It's, it's a much better price deal uh, than in the US, for example. But the big advantage that Watt Bike has right now is they've been in the market for over two years. They've been shipping bikes for over two years, uh, which means they've worked out all of those manufacturing kinks and there wasn't many to begin with. And there's virtually none right now. And that's a huge, huge deal. So then we look at the tax bike, for example, and they've certainly had some teething issues. Uh, we're not just talking like initial production delays. We're talking people that have actually got bikes and are starting to deal with them. Uh, and by and large, most people are good, but there are some kind of early issues, both firmware and hardware, that tax is having to sort through, that's slowing production and so on. Uh, still, at least they're out there, they're shipping you know, mostly globally. Uh, so you can theoretically find a bike or at least get a bike pre-order fulfilled. And then we step up to the Wahoo bike, which you know the phrase, it has more moving parts that literally applies here it has more actual moving parts uh, more things for things to go wrong and in the case of myself i've had manufacturing issues with that bike uh, and i'm not convinced those manufacturing issues are actually solved going forward for the bikes that people are going to get next week uh, for that first batch we will see uh, i think though that we probably have a bumpy road ahead for not just Wahoo, but also tax for the next few months. Like I think we probably won't see stabilization of these hardware components and whatnot, manufacturing side of things until probably 2020. Okay, so there you go, a complete showdown, shootout, shoot around, whatever you wanna call it, of all these bikes right here. Uh, hopefully you found this interesting. Again, I will have video reviews or written reviews of all of them. Uh, you'll probably see some of them at the end of this video linked right there. And then also on the site, there's tons more detail and all that stuff. If you found this interesting or useful, please whack that like button in the corner there, as well as the subscribe button if you want more sports technology goodness. Or you can drop a comment below if you've got questions, and I'll try to go ahead and get it answered. With that, have a good one.